Hello DevOps people. Hey everyone. Hey James. Thanks for the suggestion. That's that's actually uh, very valid. And um, I'll go right ahead and um, create a stream message. I have a few snippets that I use um, to that I can post from time to time and uh, reminding people that following the stream will get them notified when I go online is a great idea. Let me do that right away. Um, in the past, I used um, Text Expander to expand these snippets and um, a while ago, I discovered Espanzo, which is an open source alternative that runs on all major operating systems. It runs on Linux, it runs on Mac and on Windows. So, um, yeah, that's that's grand. And uh, it doesn't cost a subscription fee. So uh, I'll add that to my stream snippets. Let's call it follow. Don't forget to follow the stream. Thanks for sharing, James. Thank you. And Frankie as well. Thank you. Don't forget to follow the stream. It'll get you notified when I go online in the future. On your Mastodon account. Okay. Let's try it out. Oh, uh, there's a duplication here. Let's fix that. Oh, yes. Brilliant. So, um, let's get started, shall we? Um, on Tuesday, I started um, building a scalable Mastodon cluster, and um, it'll took me uh, it, it took me a little bit more time than I anticipated. Mostly because the um, official Mastodon documentation, the the, the installation guide, um, uh, is built on the uh, premise that uh, everything is going to run on the same machine on some kind of uh, VPS or something and uh, since that's not scalable and I'm using different hosts for different services uh, for example a dedicated database host things uh, were more complex and uh, so I had to um, investigate a few uh, a few things like for example allowing um, external a uh, access to um, the Postgres database and um, idiosyncrasies uh, in that context, like, for example, that um, Mastodon will first try and access the default Postgres database that uh, gets created when you set up Postgres um, in order to then create its own Mastodon database to which it will then, of course, connect. So. Uh, that's one of the things that I first needed to learn that um, the Mastodon user required access to the Postgres database first and then also um, access to the database it'll create itself. But that's exactly why I'm doing these streams, not only to share what I know and uh, to share my experience, also to share my learnings, my failures and um, so that you as my viewers can um, benefit from that, uh, from all of that. So uh, in the same vein, um, let's make this an interactive show. 
Um, I don't like streams that end up being a two hour long uh, monologue. Um, I love getting questions and I do love when you share your own things. Uh, for example, what you are doing at the moment while watching the stream. Are you cooking lunch? Are you uh, at work? Are you in a meeting and bored to death? Um, let me know what uh, you'd like to share. And uh, with that, I guess we can get started right away, shall we? By the way, as you can see, um, I've started using a GitLab repository for mm, managing the stream. Might be a little bit much, but um, what I'm doing here is I'm using the issue queue of this repository to which I'll post the link uh, in a second as soon as I... Ah, uh, okay. Um... Da -da -da -da. Give me just a moment running into sandboxing issues here. So here we go. That's the issue for today's agenda. I'm uh, using the issue queue both for um, managing the agenda and um, writing down notes, things that occur to me during the stream and things like that, so you can um, read up in advance what uh, I'm going to do and, of course, read up um, after the stream uh, what I uh, discovered or uh, noted. And uh, feel free to file issues yourself if you have any questions or suggestions or any feedback. Um, if you'd like me to cover a specific topic in one of my future streams, um, I'm more than open for suggestions, so um, feel free to pop into the issue queue and let me know. And that actually should also be a snippet, I guess. Uh, let me... Try and take care of that as well. So... Let's use Repo here. I'm in the issue queue for this stream. I post my Agenda for the current session. Feel free to file your own questions, suggestions, and or questions and suggestions. Constructive feedback is always appreciated. Let's try this. Oop, oh, that didn't work. Now, I think we're ready to go. So, where did we leave off on Tuesday? I did get to install the Postgres database and um, the Redis database. We managed to configure Mastodon and set it up so it could connect to these databases. Um, and uh, then I tried to get access to the Mastodon website 
and uh, didn't succeed. Um, I'm, yeah, I think we still had issues with reaching the database. I was able to fix that shortly after finishing the stream. And looking at the way Mastodon, the, the web component of Mastodon is set up, um, I realized that we can't um, leave out the Nginx instance. Um, I thought Nginx was mostly used as a um, kind of a load balancer. However, um, there's more to it than that. Um, if we take a look at the um, Nginx configuration here, um, you can see that not only does Nginx uh, proxy requests into Mastodon and doing SSL termination, which I thought was its main purpose, um, it also uh, serves, but it also serves uh, static files, and that's the this root setting here that is pointing to home Mastodon live slash public. Um, which means that uh, Nginx will uh, serve files that are stored locally. And that's what this uh, try files um, statement here does. If there is a file, then it will serve this file. And only if not, then it will use the, uh, the configured proxy rules to then pass on HTML requests to the actual Mastodon application. And um, I also found it uh, quite hard, if not impossible, to run the Mastodon web service on port 80, uh, mostly because Mastodon itself has its own user, as which I'm uh, logged in at the moment. I did not uh, use the suggestion from the Mastodon installation guide, um, uh, which simply suggests the boring name Mastodon. Um, I think if we run Mastodon as its own user, it needs to be the toot user. Um, hey, Enage Omega, how are you doing? Enage Omega writes, I was looking into setting up PeerTube and it has something similar, but seems like Node can serve everything. It, it just prefers Nginx for performance reasons. Really dislike that. Mm. As someone who has been using uh, Nginx for many years now, uh, I see it from the perspective of of an of a uh, op of an operations person. Um, Nginx is something that I'm very familiar with, uh, whose performance features I know, and um, where I uh, uh, yeah I know how to set up Nginx as a proxy, and it's also lightweight enough that. Uh, that uh, I don't mind it being in front of an actual web service. And yes, of course, Node is highly con can, can serve um, requests highly concurrently, but um, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it, it takes away from that uh, simply by running Nginx in front of it. You use Lighty or ASHD? I have a never, I don't, or HD? Uh, I've never heard of HD actually. Um, and yes, in, in, in the distant past, I used HAProxy. HAProxy was the first reverse proxy I got experience with, and it's also brilliant. Um, back in that day, um, HAProxy did not support SSL, though. Um, when I used it, uh, they did only HTTP, so you had to have uh, some kind of SSL termination in front of it anyway. And uh, when I realized, okay, um, Nginx can do both, uh, it can do SSL termination, it can um, proxying uh, uh, according to rules, and it can even uh, do caching, while probably not as uh, performant as Varnish. Um, I uh, basically started using Nginx as my uh, default solution for all kinds of proxying um, issues, except if it's about um, serving um, static content at high performance, then uh, uh, Varnish has the advantage here. So, um, yeah, um, that's where we are at at the moment. So what we need to do is actually um, start 
setting up nginx now and as soon as that's done i think we should be able to see our web application in our load balancer the load balancer that i'm using um, provided by the cloud platform i'm using um, does its own health checks and um, at the moment everything is red because port 80 isn't even open and i hope when we've set up nginx this will change now um let's go to the uh installation guide i did ignore setting up or installing the uh, nginx package let's look if there's anything that um we might need it's just engine nginx itself that was missing and um so let's go to our notes here and add nginx to the package list for the web node ashd is a small project a sane http da daemon that really tries to be straight and simple okay i'm i'm going to have a look at that it's always interesting to see how people um, implement this. Uh, Caddy, of course, is another great alternative. Um, it seems to be uh, performing very well and it has great integration directly with um, Let's Encrypt, which raises the question, do we want to, to run Caddy in front of our service here no no we don't have to uh, uh ssl termination is done by our load balancer so uh, that's not a concern we have um okay so th that means it's fine uh so that's that let's see um Okay, so let's install Nginx then. Oh, I'm a toot user, okay. Not install Nginx. Hey, Industrial Kilby. Um, yes, uh, on, on Tuesday already, I promised to upload the recordings of my streams to Tilvid, I did not do that yet, so I'll have to upload two streams uh, uh, later today. But yes, um, I have an account on Tilvid called Obsitive, and uh, it's there where I'm going to upload recordings of this stream. But we are just uh, getting started yet uh, for today, so you didn't miss much. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Okay, I'll consider rebooting, but I'm not going to do it now. And now we need to copy the Uh, I can't do that. Okay. Um, copy the uh, nginx configuration to let's see nginx sites available and uh, that's of course mastodon.conf then we'll have to make a few changes here backend is localhost Three and four thousand. I did not. Interesting. I'll have to take a look at the. Uh... Yeah, I think that must be it, James. Yeah. Let me see. Just to be sure. 
Yes, it is. Um, as far as I know, only port 3000 is covered by the backend application. And I wonder, do I have to run another instance of Mastodon on port 4000 to get this running? Oh, no, 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 that's... No, that's the upstream, yes. Um, well, that's strange. Yeah, it's a newly created uh, account. Um, before, I um, published my videos on YouTube. So there's also... Um, let me quickly pick this out for you to make sure that's that is working. YouTube.com at full stack live. Yep. That does work. So that's my YouTube channel where I published my previous videos. But uh, I'm going to focus on um on Tilvits from now on. So, um, server port 80 server name is, of course, going to be um, geekdom.social. And it's going to run in home, toot, live, public. The Acme challenge is uh, gets a pass through. Otherwise, it'll do a 301. And then we are not going to have a uh, an SSL port. The Linux cast. I did not know how 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 did you get here? Um, so let's see, we will probably have to copy over a few things. So let's copy these timeouts. Uh, this configuration is built uh, with the thought that this is only going to redirect to the SSL um, server, but in our case, uh, where we have a, a load balancer in front of our Nginx, so it's getting a double proxied basically. Um... Oh, that's amazing! The Linux cast boosted us. Brilliant. That's very kind. So we'll have to move a few things from the SSL portion. Well, actually, why not simply get rid of this part? Uh, wait, um, how about the... Okay. Yeah, I guess we can simply... Get rid of the server part for port 80 completely. There's also not going to be an Acme challenge, so we can actually delete this. And then uh, we can simply switch to port 80 here. Throw out the SSL part. And that's that. These are all caching rules. That's nice. Okay. That's also good to know that uh, Nginx is the instance that actually 
adds these cache control headers because that means if I want to add varnish into the mix, which is a high performance caching proxy, um, I'd probably have to put varnish in front of Nginx here um, just to um, have proper cache control information here. Um, And then we'll have the streaming API. And that's going to proxy to the streaming upstream. Okay, we'll have to find out how to run this too. I don't imagine that um, simply starting Mastodon will cover both ports, 3000 and 4000. Or will it? Not really sure, but we'll see. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's save this um, system control enable now nginx which means nginx should be running yes it does uh however yeah of course um if i use the Correct uh, host name. I should actually. Oh, okay, we might have to restart Nginx. Um, system control or reload at least. No, we haven't uh, enabled the site yet. Um, so that's. Uh, how does this work? Isn't there an ng? Mm. Isn't there a command that uh, helps us enable a configuration file from uh, sites available to sites enabled? I mean, I can always create the uh, symlink manually, but uh, let's see. Uh, uh, wait, what? No, no, no. That's what I meant. <laughs> Dear God, what, what did I do? Manually? Okay. I'm a little bit spoiled by Apache, where, where there's a, a little script that takes care of this for me. Okay, so... Um, um, let's see. Nginx. Uh, sites. Enabled. Uh, let's... Uh, Sites available Mastodon. Now let's reload uh, Nginx. And let's try this again. Now it says bad gateway. That's always bad. Yeah, that's because we, we are not running Mastodon yet. Of course. Um, it, I guess it's time to set up systemd to actually run our mastodon instance so let me check the configuration guide again that's all done now we've also have set up nginx here we are setting up systemd services they basically tell us to copy everything into the systemd configuration. Um, but, uh, ah, yes, I see. There's a Mastodon web service and a Mastodon streaming service. And we are, we are going to run Mastodon Sidekick on a different machine because it's the job background job processing that will uh, take the most um, computing power on the Mastodon side and that's why I've um, actually set aside a separate bare metal machine for running Sidekick only. Sidekick will be the, uh, the part that will require um, scaling the most. We'll also add a second um, Mastodon web node and streaming node I guess um, but that's more in um, terms of um, high availability than uh, high performance, but Sidekick will require all the uh, CPU power we can throw at it.
So let's um, copy what we need. Um, and that's also root. So let's go to shoot live mm, dist so there's mastodon streaming and mastodon web service mastodon uh, we'll use we'll make things a little bit easier to type and we we'll copy that to etsy system d system uh, just to make sure we don't overwrite anything let's do this and we'll have to adapt these files because i've changed the path as you can see we are in home toot and not in home mastodon so let's edit let's see system d system mastodon web first mastodon web user toot that's already um changed it's not in home mastodon it's in home toot life well, it's in production part 3000 we are going to use g j e malloc and then uh, we'll have to use the rbn installation here and start puma with its configuration that's all right and everything else, I guess, can stay as it is. No, here's another home mastodon. That's that. And we can go right ahead and edit the system D system mastodon streaming. And here we'll have to change this this time we are running on port 4000 streaming cluster num equals one that's node streaming restart always lots of stuff and another read write path and that's that so i guess now we can Reload system D and enable Mastodon web and Mastodon streaming. So let's see, uh, localhost port 3000. It'll probably need a second to spin up. No. Wait. System control status master done web. Yes, it's active. But it blocks localhost. Uh... That's not good, is it? That'll block Nginx as well. Why is localhost blocked? I would expect this to work from the beginning. Thanks for the link. Uh, with an unexpected host. This means you need to access this is configured host name, typically local domain. Okay. 
Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, so it's simply because I once more did not um, use the official host name. Uh, that makes sense. Um, curl, let's do a dash I so I can see the headers if necessary, and then we'll add a um, host header for geekdom.social. And that redirects to HTTPS, and we can't go f any further from here. However, let me take a look at, um, at the load balancer. That's, uh, I'm going to do that outside of my streaming desktop for safety reasons. Balancer says it's healthy. So, wait, um, how about we access geekdom.social? This page isn't working, redirected you too many times. We are on HTTPS, however, I guess Mastodon doesn't know? Or did I... Yeah, it's either Mastodon that does a redirect or I missed something in the Nginx configuration. So take a, let's take a look at uh, Nginx again. Um, sites... Uh, let's use enabled in this case, so because we, we know that it's now enabled. Uh, where is there some kind of a... No, there's no 301 here. Yeah, I guess it's probably mustard on itself. Wait, mustard on itself can't really expect. So, wait. The problem is. Mastodon does expect this header here, X forwarded proto scheme, and I guess that's uh, that's streaming. However, I guess it's the same for the website too. No, it's not interesting. So what I would expect is that uh, the Mastodon website itself also relies on the uh, X-Forwarded Proto. Um, website rule is wrong. Oh, you're right. However, that will only affect static files. Um, you're right. So let's check that uh, home. Mastodon doesn't exist anymore yep okay so static files wouldn't have been found here and that would certainly have had issues on css and things like that but uh i don't think it'll uh it's the cause of the redirect not working thanks for the hint anyway i appreciate the help so what i was uh, uh, just uh, explaining was um if there is a proxy the the proxy knows if it was accessed via HTTP or SSL, and uh, that's an information it forwards using this uh, X forwarded proto um, header. So the application itself, while always talked to via HTTP, unencrypted, um, 
uh, can read this header and uh, see if the original request came in via HTTP or SSL. Um, and uh, strangely, this doesn't seem to be the case. Oh no, that's a proxy here. Okay, that's not the streaming thingy. Yeah, okay. So, X forwarded proto. Um, will in this case always be HTTP because our load balancer does the um, it's the load balancer does, that does the uh, SSL termination then it passes on the request via HTTP always via HTTP to Nginx so in this case X forward proto will always be HTTP and uh, Mastodon will then say okay um, if uh, our visitor came in via HTTP we need to redirect them um, to uh, to SSL, and that's what's happening here. So, um, uh, we'll have to change that so that it works. Uh, but let's um, answer uh, NH Omega's uh, question here. Um, proxy pass HTTP backend means that um, Nginx will uh, proxy, which means forward this request to um, the upstream named backend, which is uh, localhost port 3000. That's our Ruby application, while port 4000 is the node application. And that's the upstream streaming. And you can see that up here, where uh, if we access slash API and so on, it'll get um, um, forwarded to the streaming upstream. Okay, so I can only assume that I and hope that our load balancer will also populate the X forwarded proto um, header. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, I would simply try and um, disable this so that the X forwarded proto. Um, header doesn't get overwritten, especially not with the dollar scheme, which will always be HTTP, so that's going to be wrong. Um, before I go to the documentation for the load balancer itself, um, let's try if this works um, as I'm guessing at the moment. So uh, let's well, uh, we can actually then... Whoops. Um, do this here. And this real IP will also be a problem, I guess, if we don't... Um, Ah, it's all a little bit complicated. I'm starting to regret having used a load balancer instead of using Nginx itself as the load balancer. We might end up spinning up another machine simply for Nginx. Um, because uh, this real IP, of course, and uh, will also be, always be populated with the remote address, which will always be the load balancer. So for Mastodon, it looks like uh, all the requests come from uh, the load balancer, and that will probably get uh, the load balancer get rate limited or something like that. Um, so it's not only the X forwarded proto header, but also the X real IP header that we will have to take care of. But let's start with the X forwarded proto here. So I've uh, disabled this on both uh, ingresses here, basically. So let's do a reload of Nginx, system control, reload Nginx. And let's see if this solved the problem. Yes, it did. However, there's not much we can see here. So I guess there's still stuff that doesn't work as intended. Um, uh, I guess.
guess we should take a look at um, so there's a 500 yeah that doesn't look good uh, where do do we find the web logs for this service I would assume that uh, it's going to write a log somewhere. Well, it's Rails, so um, it'll write a log, I guess. Nope. Nope, it doesn't. Let's see. Troubleshooting errors. Okay, it, it'll use it's using System D's uh, logging mechanism. So, channel control dash u must have done web right. Channel control. Okay, that's great. Um, it's just four of fours. Oh, it's oh, the, it's trying to render five hundred at HTML, and it can't find that. It can't find the error page it wants to to display. That means there is something wrong with uh, the... Public path. I guess that needs to be in public, right? Yeah, there's a 500 HTML. And... Um, I, I, I think I only did a reload, but uh, I might have to do a restart. You're right. System control restart. Engine X. Let's see if that changed anything. Nope. Still, I guess uh, 500s. Uh, yeah. So for some reason, it still doesn't have the right root here. It's home to live. Um. That that's what you get if uh, you deviate from from the original documentation. So there's no mastodon here, and it's home to live public. Okay, that's correct, and that's also the only route here. That is strange. However, if this would work, um, I should be able to curl this, right? If I do a curl... Um, host geekdom.social localhost slash 500.html uh, It'll try... HTTPS... What about engine x log? Tail log engine x error log. Oh, permission denied. That's of course possible, yeah. Um and uh, I wonder if that is because of file system permissions or because of um web server rules. Now, how about drums? An instrument mm. 
just a second. I just noticed that owncast uh, displays stream issues. Yes, that's that's a good uh, observation. Uh, it's stut, so it's probably um, yeah. Toot itself uh, isn't isn't world readable. Um. How about this? Ha! Huh. Okay. Now we are cooking with gas. Okay, so this part is working and I would assume that um, database access and everything else is working as well. So now to create our um, admin account. in the browser or from the command line. Okay, so I create uh, a user account and then I'll uh, identify myself as the owner. Okay, let's do that. Give me a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, let's let's set up um, um, background jobs first. So for that, we'll have to switch to a new host, and uh, I guess we'll have to do the. Uh, yeah, if if uh, all else fails, we can take a look at the database. Um. So we'll have to go through the setup again, at least in part. Namely, the web installation part and the packages stuff. So let me go ahead and... Um, copy this. And we'll have to first set up the uh, repositories for node. So that's the first thing we need to do. Yes, and now that node has been configured, we can actually go ahead and Use our command here. Install all this. Okay, stream health seems to be back. If there is anything um, that you can see on your side, if audio is off or um, if the stream keeps buffering and things like that, let me know. I am still... Uh, it's still early days for me using Owncast after having switched from Twitch, and so um, there might be optimizations I need to do.
So just in, in case you're curious, um, here we are running on a bare metal machine with uh, 12 logical cores, which should be more than enough to run a decent Mastodon instance. Microphone being tad on the low end, that should be taken care of by OBS though. Let me see. OBS is happy. Well, I might be able to simply turn on the microphone or turn up the microphone a little bit more. It should be okay. So, um, that's that. Now. Let's try and install Yarn again, Core Pack Enable. This should work now, since uh, we are not using uh, IPv6 v6 alone anymore. Enable. And then uh, Yarn Set Version Classic. Yarn Set Version Classic. Yeah, this time it worked. Okay. Okay, so... Now we are setting up RBN again. Add user. We use, of course, toot again. And let's fix the permissions right away. Uh, yeah, of course, it's not change own, it's change one. Um, now, let's install. Oh, we have to clone Mastodon first. So that's Git. Is Git installed? Yeah, it sh should be. Uh, Git uh, clone HTTPS gitlab.com um, I'm using my own repository here, masterton.git to live. Oh, that, that wasn't it. Uh, that's the RBN installation, actually. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, we were able to install RBN from apt. However, the Ruby build version was too old, so we'll need to uh, clone that. Uh, we'll have to add this to BashRC. And eval it. And that needs to be done here, but it needs to happen as our toot user. That's that. And that means we can now RBN uh, install 304. No, we can't. Why can't we? Um, dot rbn. Well, there's no plugins directory, that's why. How didn't that work? So how did the git clone command not end with a... with an error? That is strange. Let's see. Oh, it 
the command didn't come through. How strange. There we go. <clears throat> ah, wait. I forgot again that we need the other memory management. Okay, we are not. As you can see, I'm I'm doing everything manually. Um, I didn't see a reason to go to the effort of um, using some kind of infrastructure as code or uh, automation here. However, now we're going to run into the first issue, which is um, keeping the uh, Mastodon configuration in sync between the web nodes and the job nodes. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'll have to find a way to make sure we don't get into any conflicts or inconsistencies there. For the time being, I'm going to use cut and paste, but that will fail eventually. Uh, as far as uh, three decades of experience in system administration tell me. So that's something that I don't need to think about. Uh, are we going to maybe maintain our configuration in some kind of a private Git repository or something like that? Am I going to use something like Ansible to keep it in sync, which is also probably a good option to have a private Git repository on my local workstation and then use uh, Ansible to deploy this configuration to all nodes involved? Something like that might do the trick. Or maybe even just use SSH to uh, install and update uh, these configuration files. We can do that as well. So let's install Bundler. Now we are ready for this. Uh, and then we can skip this and... Uh, We've already checked out our application. Let's go to home live. And let's check out the correct release, which is going to be 402. And then time to bundle our stuff. <laughs> Ansible would probably be my tool of choice to maintain setups like this, which are complex enough to warrant some kind of um, operations automation, uh, but not require any coding or something like that. So simply um, do these installation steps for Ruby, uh, clone the Mastodon repository, fix permissions, uh, and then uh, copy in the .env.production from my local workstation where I maintain this in a Git repository. Um, I think that's something where uh, Ansible can really shine because um, it's more or less uh, a sequential process. It's um, simple things like um, 
creating directories, changing permissions, um, installing packages, uh, all things that Ansible can uh, do with ease. And um, it doesn't require a central server such as uh, Chef, which we are using for our hosting infrastructure. And if you are running hundreds of Linux servers, having a central server instance that uh, keeps track of all your machines and uh, can tell you uh, how they are set up and things like that, that makes sense for me. I wouldn't want to use Ansible for that purpose, but uh, just to maintain a handful of machines for this Mastodon cluster, I think that's a likely uh, uh, solution I'm, I'm going to go to, I think. Okay, that's Bundler done. Now um, we'll have to install Yarn stuff. So the JavaScript side of things or Node side of things. Oh, if you are running something that's mixed, well, um, Ansible can cover Windows as well. It can even cover Macs. So... Uh, I guess it's definitely still in 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 the running. Okay, that's uh yarn done. And then we'll have to copy the configuration file and run asset precompilation. Database schema does already exist. So that's not a problem. And then we'll simply set up another Nginx instance where we also have to keep the configuration in sync, I guess. Okay. So that's that. Um... So, yeah, let's create the configuration here. I'll do that behind the scenes, of course. Okay, so now we should be able to run rake. Assets uh, precompile. I'm not running Mustard on setup, of course, because we don't want to set up everything from scratch. I just copied the .env.production file from our web node. Okay. Create database schema, that's already done. Uh, which means we can go right to setting up Nginx. Nginx has already been installed. So I need to grab the Nginx configuration from the web node. Mm. 
wait, do we know? We don't need uh, Nginx in this case. Uh, there will be no web access. It's just uh, running the, the uh, sidekick workers. So in this case, we don't need Nginx, actually. You can actually just go ahead and uh, set up the uh, systemd uh, service for this. So let's go back to root. Uh, we'll copy home toot live dist mastodon sidekick service to let's see systemd service no uh, systemd system we'll have to fix wait Let's just simply search for Mastodon. No, no, that's user toot. That's toot. That's toot. And that's toot. Fetch the configuration. And enable it. Let's take a look. Channel control dash you mustard on sidekick. Doesn't look too shabby. I would say it's able to access the database and Redis as well. Otherwise, it would probably have issues. that link that you uh, just posted looks interesting Takahe an efficient activity pub server for small installs with multiple domains so something like a single user or something activity pub server focused on microblogging much like mustard and pleroma goals are multiple domains on the same server efficient stable background task via asynchronous state machines mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, interesting. And it seems to be written in Python. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. I'm I'm really um, amazed by uh, all the activity in the Fediverse about new software and things like that. Uh, it's really awesome to see the open source community rally to to get this off the ground well it is off the ground already but to to really make it fly i think we're live and running So I guess I want to follow my existing account. So Don dot social. Looks like we can talk to the Fediverse. Yep. 
nice and fast <laughs> so far. <laughs> I mean, of course. What do you expect from someone who uses a a green command prompt as their stream logo? Who has a PDP-11 in the shelf behind them? I didn't even uh, uh, make this uh, take this photo with uh, Mr. Ackerman in mind. I just... Uh, I think I just wore a, a black hoodie and my wife took a photo of me and later I realized, well, that that hood really looks good. It was on the bigger side, so it's more uh, looked more like a monk's hood or something like that. And uh, so, yeah, uh, of course, I keep reusing that picture. Well, looks like... We got ourselves a Mustadon cluster. Well, it's not... Yeah, it is a cluster in the sense that there are um, different machines sharing um, dif uh, sharing uh, components and services. But um, it's not a cluster in the high availability sense because there's only one database node and there's only one uh, jobs node and there's only one web node. But we can always add them later. And yes, I'm going to move to it. Um, I'm going to make this my home instance. Uh, I'll move my uh, followings and followers from muston.social over here. And uh, I'll also uh, get the instance ready uh, to, to really um, get others on there as well. I've always been interested in these community things. Um, even Back in the early 90s, I, I ran my own BBS system right from my bedroom PC. Uh, I still remember I really had to get used to keeping the PC running day and night and actually sleeping at night with the PC running next to my bed, um, uh, the fan running and everything. Um, maybe hearing the modem click or even uh, beep when when someone called in. Uh, so, yeah, I have very fond memories of that time, and I enjoyed getting in touch with the people using my BBS. I actually made friends doing that because uh, people called in from uh, uh, all the, all around my my hometown. And uh, we started to do things like meetups, and uh, some of these people uh, I'm I'm in touch with uh, after 30 years now, and um, so yeah, this was quite the the experience for me. And uh, I do know that uh, there's uh, a lot of um, stuff uh, that you need to deal with as a as an instance admin, and uh, if you want to want it to be a, a bigger instance you probably need to to build a team of of people um doing moderation and things like that so that's why i'm not going to rush it um making the the instance public uh but if you'd like to sign up um you're more than welcome to do so oh you're running your own home server with matrix on it I haven't gone as far. Um, I do run a few uh, home services on my NAS. Um, I'm, I'm using a, uh, a small Synology NAS, but um, I added a bit of RAM so I can run a few Docker containers for Home Assistant and uh, Pi-hole and things like that. Uh, uh, but I'm not running any public services on there. Even though I did actually uh, create a subdomain for a BBS, that I wanted to maybe build or run, but I never got to it. Um, I mean, my my uh, broadband connection would do for a public service, but on the other hand, uh, using cloud services like I did yet for for this Mastodon instance um, does make more sense because I can build things in a redundant way 
uh, adding new web nodes and adding a second database node, things like that. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to do that here in, from, from my office. I would have to run a, a rack like Chris Nova is doing over there with Hackyderm. Um, and uh, no, I'm not going to do that if I have uh, data centers at my disposal. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, now I feel like uh, the dog that chased the ambulance and uh, actually caught up with it and now doesn't know what to do. Um, I guess uh, it's uh, time to, to try out my new Mastodon account. And... Uh, see what we can do. Uh, what I would like to do is... Um, I don't expect anything spectacular here. No, this machine is completely idle. Not much sidekick activity here. And web is probably the same, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so how can we get a little bit of load on there? Try it with us. Oh, you're afraid that I'm going to sign off? Yeah, I was about to do that, actually. Or I, I, I was at least um, considering signing off. But yeah, okay. Um, now... Um, Oh, look, there's a notification. I'm not sure if I want to... Yeah, it's... Is it a personal notification? See, uh, now that I have a mixed personal and admin user account, I'm not sure if I click this, um, it's going to re reveal anything personal about myself. No, it's probably not re uh, going to reveal something about myself, but maybe it's about someone signing up or something like that. So... Um... <laughs> Thanks, Moo. <Boo. laughs> did you just follow me or did you just sign up? Um, I'll switch to the... Oh, you can't see my desktop anyway. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, Moo did actually follow me. So, let's follow them back. Uh, and uh, maybe take a look at... Yeah, okay. I can't see anything um, with uh, Sidekick. It's just uh, showing that it's uh, running all these workers, but uh, there's nothing too spectacular here. Yes, you are right. Um, now that I've uh, deleted the generic admin uh user because it was taking up my personal email address um having a an official i think i go i'm going to recreate the the admin user to be honest but um let me just uh, check out um uh what uh the sidekick log looks like i'll do that uh in private so let's do a journal control dash you mastodon dash sidekick and let's follow that interesting yeah paper click paper clip is storing stuff oh you mean um an actual operator you know what i'm going to create sysop We do need a sysop account. But I'll have to find the proper email address for that as well. Um, that's another thing that I need to decide. Um, am I, for, for example, going to use a uh, ticket system for official requests and things like that? And I guess I'd uh, connect the email address of the sysop account to that or something like that. 
Um, <laughs> Thanks, James. And uh, yes, NH Omega, you're more than welcome to join us here on geekdom.social. Uh, yes, it is public. It's, let's say, it's in soft launch because uh, I still need to set up things like privacy policy, things like that. Um, I need to set up... Uh, uh, the the uh, some, um, kind of code of conduct things like that so um yeah it's not officially public but i haven't blocked uh, signups either so uh, yeah that's that looks like things are running okay i see paperclip creating pictures and uh, resizing them, creating thumbnails, I, I assume. So that's nice. Well, look at that. Everyone's following. Thank you. So, since people are signing up... <laughs> Moose already doing marketing here. Don't get me overwhelmed over here. Make it limited registration and set the display.man account to GWS. Yeah, um, how do we do that? Ah, now things are going crazy. You want it low? No, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge, so let's see. Is there an, an admin guide or something about for, for Mastodon? I actually have no idea. Mm. Running Mastodon, setting up your new instance, moderation actions. Let's see. Oh yeah, filling in server information. After logging in, navigate to the site settings page under preferences administration. All right, I see. There's a new um Yes, the settings list has become a little bit longer. I can see Sidekick. Okay, there's a dashboard. Manage server rules. Okay, here we go. Oof, okay, let's see. Server settings. Server name. Mm. Server name. How people may refer to your server. Let's, let's... Uh... Wait. Uh... There we go. So let's say that's Geekdom, contact username, that's Jewish at the moment, contact email. How oh, people can reach you for legal or support inquiries. Uh, I'll use um, support at fediverse.com for that. Server description. I'll have to think of something pithy here. And server thumbnail? Mm -hmm. We'll have to find something for that as well. And then there's an extended description. Show domain blocks. Uh, I guess I'll publish these later. And then we'll need a privacy policy. Or leave blank to use the default. I, I, let's hope the default is okay. Um, approval required. 
require a reason for join. Uh, make the why do you want to join text input mandatory rather than optional. Yep. Discovery, enable trends, yeah, allow trends without prior review, no idea what that means, uh, allow unauthenticated access to public timelines, yeah, that's okay. Follow recommendations, always recommend these accounts to new users, well, let's recommend my own, huh? And the still to be created uh, sysop account. Enable profile directory. Yeah, that's fair. Content retention, media cache retention period. We'll have to find out how this is going to play out. Um, user archive retention period. Keep generated user archives for this specific number. Seven days is perfectly okay. Default theme is definitely going to be a dark theme. I might actually use custom CSS to use Dracula colors because that's my absolute favorite um, color theme. And custom mascot. We don't have a mascot yet, so that's going to be something we're going to do later. Server rules. Okay, let's see. While most claim to have read and... <laughs> I agree to the terms of service. Usually people do not read through until and after a problem arises. Made it easier to see a service rules at a glance by providing them in a flat bullet point list. Yeah, that makes sense. Trying to try to keep individual rules short and simple, but try not to split them up into many separate items either because people will stop reading that, of course. Okay. Uh, roles will keep defaults. Announcements. Okay, here I can create new announcements, custom emoji, they will definitely use that, webhook and relays. Okay, let's take a look at Sidekick. Oops. Um, okay. No failed jobs so far. Good. Well, there is one failed, actually. No idea what maybe that was in, at the beginning or something we did process 699 jobs already quite impressive pg hero nothing too problematic i guess no long running queries 17 connections okay I'll have to keep an eye on that, I guess. What is Relays? A Federation Relay is an intermediary server that exchanges large volumes of public posts. Okay. I haven't heard of Relays yet, but yeah, that makes sense. Automated post deletions? Oh, that's for my personal account, okay. Moderation. No reports yet. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to click on accounts, just to be sure and safe. Um... No pending users yet. Okay. So, question. Where do I decide with whom to federate and with whom not to federate? In other words, where do I block?
James, did you create an account yourself? I'm surprised to see your posts in my home timeline. How did that... Oh, I did... I did follow you from here because um, you posted... Ah, okay. I'm actually following you from here as well. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting... I'm, uh, I'll be honest, uh, this is a bit confusing because um, now... Uh, Admin stuff is mixing with my personal stuff, and uh, that'll be an interesting thing to 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 see. Okay. Well, we seem to be processing jobs nicely without failed uh, creating failed jobs. That's good to see. Hmm. I guess it it's uh, it does make sense to to migrate my account and see what kind of load this is going to create with uh, media having to be cached and things like that and then I guess I need to get the red tape stuff sorted in terms of um yeah terms of service privacy policy things like that thankfully uh, a lot of uh, interesting sources for that have been popping up so i don't have to start or uh, build something from scratch in terms of privacy policy and, and things Okay. Success. I mean, the main thing that I'm going to be curious about is how this setup is going to uh, hold up with a growing number of users. Having a four core web node that can easily be scaled horizontally having a 12 core job node that can also be scaled horizontally having a 16 core database node that can't be sc uh, scaled horizontally at least not easily We can always scale vertically, of course, and we there is uh, the option of uh, using read replicas to spread the read load, which is also an interesting aspect of these scalability issues. Yeah, so... Uh, of course, this uh, does cost a little bit. It's a little bit more than a six buck shared instance at master.host, but um, that's what we're here for, to see IT in action, I guess. All right, folks, so I guess I'm, I'm going to sign off, actually, um, and uh, get a little bit of fresh air. And um, then I'm going to set up uh, things like server rules and stuff like that. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. And I might actually move over my, my personal account. Do I trust my own infrastructure enough to do that? Yes, I do. So, okay. That means... Um, This is it for today. If you would like to uh, join me next time, make sure to follow this uh, stream. 
and uh, you can still <laughs> follow me uh, over on mastodon.social and of course you can now also follow me as jeeves at geekdom.social and we'll see how things are going to turn out i'll report back next tuesday my stream um days are usually tuesdays and thursdays in the afternoon around two-ish uh, irish time which is utc time um but uh, at the moment uh, it's always getting later that it's it's more like 3 p.m in the afternoon and um yeah i'd i'd love to to see you there and um i'll make sure to upload the recordings of tuesdays and today's streams to uh, tilvids and um post on mastodon about them what else uh well yeah uh as always thank you all for being here thank you for helping me thanks for chatting in general uh, I had a lot of fun, especially uh, now that I've been able to finish this setup successfully. And um, yeah, have a great time. And until next week, take care.